Hello everyone, I'm Rusty Dunn from Enterprise Communications. Once again, glad to be with my friend and colleague. I know him as the Indiana Jones of Caterpillar. You may know him as Lee Fosberg, Director of Corporate Archives. Lee, how are you? Good to see you again, Rusty. And I say Indiana Jones because you're always excavating, digging, exploring in through all of those hallways of Caterpillar history and coming up with those great stories. And what I love about this one, this is a real origin story mm -hmm. for our first machine mm -hmm. that was put on tracks. And we want to start with Thanksgiving Day 115 years ago. Can you imagine Benjamin Holt's family ready to sit mm -hmm. down to eat their Thanksgiving dinner, presumably turkey, ham, the whole works. We're hungry, Grandpa Holt. We're hungry, Dad. Hold on. Guys, the food will keep. Come with me. What happened mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. Day, Lee? Get this story started. Well, maybe he brought the turkey out to the field. I don't know. Well, let's but, hope so. <laughs> but really what the story was, like Benjamin Holt, he was a, you know, he was first and foremost, he was an engineer, he was an inventor. But what he did was he tested the first prototype track type tractor, which became the first commercially successful track type tractor. And that's kind of the, the story that we're going to tell here today. Excellent. So mm -hmm. you're going from a, mm -hmm. you know, a steam tractor yep. to putting tracks on it. That's right. Well, you know, gasoline was really in its infancy. Steam was the power of the day. And kind of like this model that we're looking at right here, this is a Holt steam tractor. They made combine harvesters. They made steam tractors. And you'll see this model has round wheels, and that's what Holt first did. He made round wheel tractors. But in the environment that they were in in Stockton, California, which was in the San Joaquin River Valley, so it was like in the Delta area that he sold his equipment, very marshy, big wheeled tractors, like, kind of like the model we're looking at today. They had round wheels, would sink in the mud. Tend to get stuck in this yeah. material. Yeah, so he had the idea, how can I have them kind of, you would say almost glide across, right, this kind of soil. And his idea was putting tracks on the tractor. So he had a tractor, it was serial number 77. He took the wheels off, he put wooden tracks, believe it or not, on, and that was the first track. It's so, correct me if I'm wrong, this was where we heard a first reference mm -hmm to mm -hmm. the word caterpillar. How, how did that come about? So how that happened was after he tested Thanksgiving Day, he kept on testing that machine, right? And then a year later in 1905, he had it, he had a photographer, he was kind of a, a, a master of, you know, kind of promoting his equipment. Sure. So they were gonna shoot photography. And as it started coming across the field, a person said, that looks like a giant caterpillar because, you know, the tracks were moving like this, right? across this field. Did Mr. Holt take with that right away and, well, and buy into that, or what was his reaction? Well, he wanted to call it other things, like paddle wheel was one of the examples. And, and so it took a little bit before, you know, that, that stuck as their trademark. But it really was based upon this first prototype machine. So what happened over the next couple of years to get this to a, a, a production machine, and you've got a customer? Yeah, yeah, well, that kind of evolved. He, from number 77, he built another machine um, that served as a prototype, but the third machine he made, which again was a steam machine, was the first production model, serial number 111. 111, so, mm -hmm. it, and they, he had a customer for it, yes? He had a customer. Who was that customer? So it, it was a customer, he sold it in Lockport, Louisiana. It was an area that was like a Delta region, very similar to what it was designed for, and they shipped that machine by water and by rail down to that customer. It's a sort of an origin story too then, mm -hmm. because as I understand it, Lee, this was a first production machine where um, we attached some after what we know as aftermarket services to yes. it in terms of mm -hmm. parts, service, maintenance. Mm -hmm. What did this first machine cost that customer? Any idea? And, and, and the other question is, did we help them in any way finance it? Well, it, it, it costs right in the thousands of dollars, which in today's money would be you know, well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Holt provided financing to get it off the ground and make that sale. The second thing that they did was they brought that machine to Louisiana, and a gentleman called Paul Weston, who is kind of you know, like a Holt certified type of person to set up a machine. So he worked for Mr. Yes. Holt and helped, yes. helped the customer set it up. He, he set it up, he trained them how to use the machine. I remember new technology, they wouldn't know how to use that. 
and he also would help them in ways if they had questions and other types of training. Mm -hmm. uh, it, would they have had a? They wouldn't have had a parts book with this. Well, believe it or not, there was a parts book. A little bit different than our parts books today. I'll bet. They documented every piece of the machine. They took a photograph of every part because right when a, a part broke, they had to replace that part for that customer could get that piece of equipment up and going as soon as possible. So, and it wasn't, as you look at pictures of, the, of this parts book, you can see that they included dimensions, the exact yeah. dimensions with yeah. each of these pictures. Yeah. And there were a lot of dimensions. pictures in this parts book. Yeah. I want to ask now, back to aftermarket services here a little bit. Yeah. And I'm sure that, I assume there was a real evolving of, of that side as well when you talk about yeah. supporting the customer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you got to remember this was pre-dealer network, right? Yeah. And you got to remember these machines also, they were built by hand. It wasn't Henry Ford with like Model T's coming off the, the, the assembly line. So Holt would send people out in the field periodically, really in the California area, where they might check up on these machines and they would do little tweaks to the machines um, to get them up running more efficiently or if, if they were breaking down in the field. So a lot of times too, which was to me one of my favorite stories is, you know, they would use these machines for agricultural applications, right? If a machine went down in the field, you had to get parts there right away, right? Or, or the, the absolutely, it, it would go bad. So a lot of times, you know, an airplane was kind of a newfangled technology at the time. They would bring these parts in by airplane. So you know, <laughs> we were always working on ways. How could we improve? You know, our customer service. It's funny you talk mm -hmm. about innovation. Back in the day, that was yeah. truly innovative yes, in terms of absolutely of, and and doing what you had to do to meet the customer's needs. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. So, Lee, as you talk about 111, I'm gonna at, at the risk of of asking a dumb question, but I'm always good at that. <laughs> 111 would not. Is it still around? Does it still exist in some way, shape, or form? Well, today? the answer is sort of. So 111 does live on, and this is how it lives on, is a person made a replica of that machine, as you can imagine, really? probably at a very large cost, based upon one existing part, which was a flywheel, a part very similar to this. And what he did was, he actually took that parts book. You know, Did Benjamin Holt think 100 years ago that that parts book would still be used? Right. He used the parts book that we had in the archives collection to fabricate every part and put this machine together. And believe it or not, it runs and they, they bring it to antique Caterpillar shows. So if you think one part can't make a difference, thank goodness for that flywheel. It, it, it can, right? It, it, that parts book keeps on giving on today, right? That is fascinating. It is mm -hmm. really, really interesting that you could take mm -hmm. um, one part and, and a parts book and go from there. Yeah, yeah. Lee, I, again, keep, Dr. Jones, keep digging, keep finding those great stories, but what an awesome origin story that is, and, right. and that linkage then to what we do today. Mm -hmm. It's v very cool. Good to see you again, Russell. Yeah, you too. As always, thanks for watching. Be safe in everything that you do. We'll see you next time.